So I recorded a little addendum to the regular podcast that I do on a weekly basis over for Crush Live Poker, which is the site that I own. Sometimes I talk about some financial strategies and tools that you know can lead to overall savings in life. And for a lot of you guys that are poker players, we have to deal with uh, health insurance basically off of the individual exchanges. So because we are in the open enrollment period, and I've studied this a fair amount, and I used to be on individual plans in the individual market before Obamacare and after, I'm, I think I know quite a bit about this. So I want to uh, give everybody this information, especially those that need to buy uh, on the individual exchange. And as kind of a funny aside, when I recorded this, I had one of the worst cases of laryngitis for a single day that I had had. So if you're hearing my voice, it was a, it was a little bit of a, of a struggle. All right, so let's talk about some healthcare here. This is uh, obviously quite a complex topic, and I, I'm, I'm just going to try to give the best advice I can in the beginning um, early on so you guys don't really get, obviously, all that loss. But this applies for individuals and for people that are on employer plans as well. Now, I have spoken in some of my other work uh, about investments and things like that, that if you really want to gain wealth, you have to take advantage of tax preferential programs and accounts that the government lays out for you. We know about IRAs, we know about 401ks, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So an HSA is actually the best of both worlds, both pre-tax and post-tax. It acts as a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA all in one. An HSA is a health savings account. Um, and in order to open a health savings account, you need to have a high deductible plan. So you put, I think you can put up to $3,450 into this health savings account per person. And it is a straight tax deduction, similar to a traditional IRA. And it also grows tax-free the same as a Roth IRA. If you're going to start putting money into tax preferential accounts, an HSA is really the first place that you should put money before anything else because it's so good. Now, when can you use the money in an HSA? You're supposed to use it for qualified medical expenses. And this is why it works with a high deductible plan because with a high deductible plan, you have to pay the deductible. You have to pay the first X amount of money towards your care. So you can use the HSA for that. But you also don't have to use the HSA. You can save the medical receipts and reimburse yourself sometime in the future, at a later time, years from the future. If you build up all this money in an HSA and um, you don't use it for medical expenses, it acts as a regular IRA in your retirement. But I mean, as you get older, you're always going to have medical expenses at some point, whether it's prescriptions or whatever. So an HSA is really gold to the point where I want some of you to actually even look at your employer-based plans. And if you're paying, say, you know, X amount of money per month and you really have a small, you know, you have a small deductible and you're happy with that. Look at the high deductible plan that's offered through your employer and see the HSA compatible plan, if that makes sense for you. Because there are some employers that actually offer like a deal where some of the contribution that they would be making to your premium goes into the HSA. So it's an unbelievable deal. An HSA is an unbelievable deal. And this is why I am advocating for most poker players in the individual market um, a high deductible plan. Now, what is a deductible? What is a high deductible? Well, and this is why I'm talking about this because I feel like, you know, I'm a professional gambler. The way that our health insurance is set up, depending on what level of coverage that you want, you are gambling. Now, you're not gambling on the quality of care. You're gambling on the amount that you're going to pay in a year. So to put it very simply, I'm going to use round numbers. You could pay, let's say, $300 a month for a premium for health insurance. So that's $3,600 a year. But you have a $5,000 deductible. A deductible is what you have to pay first before your insurance kicks in. There are some other things that 
are covered. Like a, I think it's like four checkups in these Obamacare ACA compliant plans. But for the most part, you're going to have to pay your first $5,000 if you have a $5,000 deductible um, up to what is the out-of-pocket maximum. Now, if you are in a high deductible plan like a bronze plan, um, most of the time the deductible and the out-of-pocket maximum are pretty similar. Like the plan that I'm looking at, like the deductible is 6000 the out-of-pocket maximum is like 6600 But I would have to pay my first $6,000. But anyways, let's go back to this example here with round numbers. So let's say that $300 in premium a month, that's 3600 I got to pay my first 5000 So if I had something happen to me, that would cost me 8600 bucks, right, for the year. Once I get up to my deductible, or once I get up past the deductible to the out-of-pocket maximum, then everything is covered. There is something that's called coinsurance, which I'm not going to get into too much, which is more applicable to silver, gold, and platinum plans. Because you pay a higher premium for like a platinum plan, let's say that you don't have a deductible at all, Coinsurance is what you have to pay as a percentage of what it costs the insurance company up to the out-of-pocket maximum. So if your out-of-pocket maximum is 6000 and you're on a platinum plan and you've got 80% coinsurance, you have to pay 20% of whatever the bill is until you reach your out-of-pocket maximum. So I'm not going to go into coinsurance too much because, like I said, it doesn't apply really for high deductible plans. But anyways, so if we're in a bronze plan, we get $300 a month, right? $300 a month, $3,600, $5,000 deductible, right? That's $8,600, okay? Or we could be on a platinum plan. Again, I'm just going to use round numbers. We could pay $600 a month and have no deductible, right? So if I'm paying $600 a month, I'm paying $7,200 a year. But I, I don't have to pay anything towards my insurance, okay? I, I, I pay nothing, right? So that's $7,200 a year. Now, if I'm on this bronze plan, the HSA bronze plan, I'm paying $3,600 a year. But if I have to use it in some sort of emergency, I'm, you know, I end up paying $8,600. So if I'm healthy and I don't get sick often, the bronze plan makes the most sense because it's only costing me $3,600 instead of $7,200, So that's the gamble. That's the expectation. But the reason why these bronze plans are actually even better than the plans with that are platinum or gold is because of the HSA. So the HSA says, all right, you're on a high deductible plan. You're going to pay 300 bucks a month. And, you know, your deductible is $6,000. You can put $3,450 into an HSA, which you can use towards your deductible if you have to be hospitalized or something like that. That is basically the crux of how these things, how these things work. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about like my options and what I have sort of discovered. I have been on an individual plan actually before Obamacare. So I'm actually quite familiar with the individual market or what it was before. And, and obviously the cost have skyrocketed. What has changed is that there is no underwriting now. Now, what is underwriting? It means that you can sign up for these compliant plans with a pre-existing condition. You couldn't do that before. So you basically look at a booklet, you look at your zip code, you look at your age, and it's already set out how much these plans are going to cost um, or what the limitations and things are. You have a bunch of different choices, but... If I have cancer and I'm 39 and I'm going to buy into a PPO plan in my zip code, it costs me the same amount as somebody else who's perfectly healthy at 39 in my zip code. And that's what sort of has kind of caused the, you know, the prices to to skyrocket um, a little bit. Also, people who are healthy don't get insurance um, if they're not necessarily protecting their assets. There actually is no, um, there's no penalty coming up, the Republicans repealed the individual mandate. So that will be interesting. But I do think that it's definitely wise to still buy insurance. And I do think that you should buy compliant insurance. And I'll tell you why, because, and I could be slightly wrong about this. If I'm totally wrong, somebody can email me in. But from my research over the last few weeks, I had thought 
when they repealed the individual mandate that there were going to be some private companies that were going to come in and say, hey, we're going to offer non-compliant ACA plans, sort of like back before Obamacare, where they're not going to cover you. They, they won't take you on if you have a pre-existing condition. There's going to be a medical underwriting, but I'm healthy. And all I really want for insurance is I'd like to play, pay 50 or or $100 a month and have a $25,000 deductible. That's what I want because I'm only using the health insurance for hospitalization. So I thought that these companies would come in and do that. But when I'm looking at these non-compliant ACA plans, there are caps on them which makes absolutely no sense at all. Like you pay $75 a month, but like you're capped at $20,000 in payments for the year. Why would anyone get that? That makes absolutely no sense. Again, if I'm wrong, let me know. If anybody has found non-compliant ACA plans that, have, that don't have caps, that are super high deductible and low premiums, that would definitely interest me. But I haven't seen it. They seem sort of like all scams to me for the most part, these non-ACA plans. So I would say definitely get insurance because you don't want to protect your assets. You know, it's interesting. I was looking up, I mean, obviously if you're healthy, the number one, you know, primary thing that you're going to have happen to you that you would have a big medical bill would be a car accident. And I was looking at the minimums required by law for car insurance the other party's liability, their medical liability, the minimum is only $15,000, which means if you get T-boned by somebody and they have the minimum liability insurance, and let's say that you break some ribs, puncture your lung, their insurance company is only going to pay you $15,000. That's all they have. Now, you could sue that person, but what if they have no assets? You could go bankrupt from a car accident. So if you have assets, definitely, definitely makes sense to have this type, to have health insurance. Now it's interesting the way that we approach health insurance in this country. There was a really good podcast on Joe Rogan by a guy, and I don't remember his name, but he was like, you know, if we treated health insurance sort of like car insurance, it would be much, much different. Now, what does that mean? It means like when you have car insurance, your car insurance doesn't cover oil changes, filling up gas tanks, rotating tires, brake changes, regular maintenance. Your car insurance doesn't cover that, right? It only covers like catastrophic accidents. So why do we expect that going to doctor's offices and things like checkups would be covered under health insurance? But that's what has sort of been expected. And that's what people are accustomed to. But what I was going to say is, is that I will tell you, because I'm actually going to change. So it's always a battle for me. Each and every year, I have to like look at the, the enrollment. We're in the enrollment period right now, right, for Obamacare. I think it's the 15th to like December 31st. And I like to stay, quote unquote, with my medical group. So I'm in a medical group. I mean, my doctors are in a medical group, Cedar sinais That's where the, the hospital is. That's where all my medical records are. I really only go to the doctor once a year to a dermatologist to, because I have a lot of moles on my back. So she does like this mole mapping thing, but that's the only reason why I go to the doctor. So I've every year just made sure that, you know, sometimes the companies change every year, like the, 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 the carriers change every year, whether it's Blue Shield, Blue Cross, Anthem, HealthNet, whatever it is. My doctor group changes every year. So every year I've been looked and I've been like, oh, well, I got to make sure that my doctor's or covered by whatever health insurance that I get, right? And the only thing that covers my doctors is usually the most expensive option, okay? Still a bronzed option, but like the most expensive option at each level. By the way, when we're talking about bronze, silver, gold, platinum, it's just talking about the cost of the premiums per month and the deductibles. Bronze is going to have the lowest premiums and the highest deductibles. Platinum is going to have the highest premiums and the lowest deductibles. That's all it is. But, you know, my group is a part of, right, like, right, I think this year for 2018, I think it's Blue Shield of California. It's a PPO. And we'll talk about three different types of coverage too, but it's the most expensive one. Like I had an option. There's three on the exchange, like, uh, that are health savings account compliant. And it's the most expensive one. And next year, it's the most expensive one. It's $394 a month, 
with a $6,000 deductible and a $6,600 out-of-pocket maximum. By the way, all those limits are the same across each company, each different, every bronze plan is the same for the limits and the premium. Uh, uh, excuse me, for the, for the limits um, in terms of what the deductible is and the out-of-pocket maximum. You could have cheaper premiums. Right now, I was just looking at it. I have a PPO option, an HMO option, and an EPO option. Those are three, the three basic types of coverage that you're going to see. PPO, HMO, EPO. PPO is pretty simple. It's usually going to be the most expensive one. You can go to any doctor that you want that's in basically your network, okay? And, um, you know, you got to pay the deductible off, but you can go to a specialist. You don't need a referral. The main thing about PPO is that if you go to a doctor or facility out of network, they still cover it, but there's different limitations. Like the deductible is like maybe 12000 and the out-of-pocket maximum is, you know, 15000 if you go somewhere out of network. That's, that's what a PPO is, and that's why it's probably the more expensive one. HMO is a health maintenance organization. The option here in my area is Kaiser Permanente, where you go to their center. If you need to go to a specialist, you have to go to your primary care, and they need to give you a referral. Generally, the stuff that is out of network is not covered unless it's emergency care, um, and it's a way to keep the cost down. That one's two ninety a month, so my PPO option, which is where my doctors are, three ninety four a month. Kaiser is two ninety a month, which is the HMO. And then there's this thing, Oscar, which is sort of a new type of it's almost like an Uber, like an app. And they only do it in major cities, but that's an EPO. Now what is an EPO? An EPO is like a PPO, but it doesn't cover anything out of network. However, and, and that sort of makes me a little bit nervous, but this is why I think it's actually good to get a, an ACA compliant plan and not fuck around with like a private non-compliant plan right now. All emergency type of coverage is covered in or out of network in any of these plans. And that's the only reason why I'm getting health insurance for the emergencies. So if I go back to Boston and I'm on an EPO or I'm on Kaiser HMO and I break my leg, I can go to the hospital. They're not going to, my insurance company, I'm going to, I can go to the ER. My insurance company isn't going to be able to charge me and say, or my insurance company isn't going to be able to say, I'm not paying, we're not paying out because you're out of network because all our network facilities are in California. That's a part of the law. That's a part of ACA compliance. So it's the emergency care that's the most important thing. So like I said, in years past, I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll just do the PPO because that's where my doctors are, right? That's where my doctors are, so it'll be covered under there and I don't have to worry about it. So I was paying the higher premium. But here's the very, very interesting thing, okay, about the way that healthcare costs work, which is really, really ridiculous. It used to be, from what I remember, before Obamacare, it used to be, yes, you'd have medical underwriting, but the plans would be cheap and the deductibles would be cheap. Like I said, like in the mid 2000s when I was like 25, I think I was paying 69 bucks with HealthNet with like a $1,500 deductible, you know? But you really had to have health insurance because the pre negotiated rates of a procedure with the health insurance carrier were as much as like five or 10 times less than what they would charge you for cash. So if I broke my leg and I didn't have insurance and I went to the hospital, they would try to charge me like $30,000 for ca in cash for the cash rate, right? But if I had insurance and HealthNet had already had a pre-negotiated rate for that procedure, they might only bill the insurance company $5,000. You see what I'm saying? So you almost were forced to get insurance because the system was rigged because of the pre-negotiated rates with the carriers. What's happened now has it's actually flipped, which is quite, quite interesting. So this is what got me on thinking that, hey, I'm just going to get the absolute cheapest HSA compliant plan, which is probably this Oscar PPO, uh, EPO. What's happened now is it's flipped. So I go for this mole mapping once a year to my dermatologist. Okay. The listed price of that. She just takes pictures and, you know, whatever, does a few things. The listed price is 700 bucks or that's what the, the list price is. Okay. The pre-negotiated rate with Blue Cross 
is $375, okay? So I have to pay $375 because I have to pay my first $6,000 until I reach my deductible. Now, if I was on a platinum plan, I wouldn't pay anything, right? Because I wouldn't have a deductible. So I have to pay $375. Out of pocket, it goes to my deductible. It goes to my out-of-pocket max. Check this out. If I had paid cash, they would have only charged me 275 bucks. I did not know this until after the fact. So I could have gotten out of the doctor's office for cheaper paying cash than it cost me going through insurance. And that's what infuriates people so much that don't understand the way that this works is like, what am I paying for? But the point that I'm making is, is that now what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue to go to my dermatologist at Cedar sinai I like my doctors over there. They, if, so, if I need to go to my primary care, I'm going to go to Cedar sinai I'm just going to pay cash. I don't need to be a part of Blue Cross PPO insurance and have to pay more than I would in cash so that 375 goes towards my deductible. That's ridiculous. I only need catastrophic health insurance for traumas and injuries. And one of the other things too that you can take advantage of and you see them pop up all over the place. There are many, many urgent care centers now that are all around. Um, and usually what it is is like, it, it's usually like a minimum. It's like 140 bucks to see a doctor plus whatever you need. But let's say you get in and out for 300 bucks. You need some antibiotics. You need some medicine, whatever it was. You know, you had strep throat. Well, that's going to be cheaper than going through your doctor and going through the insurance. Or it probably would be for me. So that's what I'm saying is that you have to look at this as an approach where if you're healthy and you want the most expected value, the way to game this system is to pay the least in premiums, take advantage of this triple tax preferential government health savings account, max it out, and just treat your insurance as catastrophic. Don't worry about the fact if your doctors are under your insurance, it doesn't matter. You're going to pay anyways. And a lot of times you can pay less if you tell them you don't have insurance because they're going to charge you the cash rate. So you have insurance for the catastrophic types of things. And the other crazy thing is, and I, I, listen, I know the system's fucked up and I've talked to people about this and they're like, well, here's the, here's the argument against what I'm doing, you know, getting the cheapest plan. What happens if, you, if I come down with a major ailment? What if I get cancer? What if something has happened where I need some sort of treatment? Wouldn't I want to be with the best doctors? Let's say the best doctors are my Cedar sinai Medical Group, right? If I'm with Oscar, I can't go to these guys because none of that stuff's going to be covered through them, right? But here's the thing. I can just enroll in the PPO at 394 a year during the next enrollment period after I'm sick because there's no, there's no um, medical underwriting. You can't be denied for pre-existing conditions. So I can go on the cheapest plan now, and for some reason, if I get cancer, I can go and put myself on the PPO, the Blue Shield PPO, and go back to my doctors. It's going to be covered. So that's how fucked up the system is. So I'm coming in to record something else here after the fact because I want to get all the facts right here. The example that I gave where I said, hey, you know, well, if I just get cancer, you know, I'll pay for a higher plan with a lower deductible. Um, what I failed to, to basically mention was, was that you can only sign up for health insurance during the open enrollment plan unless you have circumstances that qualify you for special for the special enrollment period. So open enrollment in California, it actually already started, but I, at the federal level and in most states, it actually starts on November 1st and it goes to December 15th. In previous years, they have extended it because there are commonly problems with the websites. So it wouldn't surprise me if it gets extended and then extended again. But once that open enrollment period is up, you can no longer get health insurance for 2019 unless, like I said, you qualify for the special enrollment period. And the special enrollment period um, you qualify for if 
you basically have a, a few things, changes in household. One of the things that I found interesting when I was researching this that's good is, is that, um, you know, if, if you're a woman and you have a kid and you don't have health insurance, you can retroactively get health insurance. So anytime you have a baby, you can sign on during the special enrollment period. Um, if you get married, you have something like 60 days to change your health care plan as well. Changes in residence, if you're moving to another home in a zip code, if you lose your health insurance, you qualify for the special enrollment period. But you can't just, you know, pay into a cheaper plan and say, oh, if I get sick, I'm going to change to a more expensive plan. Uh, and there might have been some confusion about that. And then lastly about that that thing too that I, I might not have mentioned is uh, the essential benefits that an ACA compliant plan will basically guarantee you. And that's the important thing with hospitalization. There's a few different things. I mean, you can Google it, but it's, you know, ambulance, hospitalization, maternity, substance abuse, I think, mental health, things like that, where these types of plans, they can charge you towards your deductible, but they can't cap you. And you and they can never say, hey, we don't cover this. So that was sort of my whole premise for last week saying, you know, if you're really financially responsible and you want to do healthcare the GTO way, quote unquote, the GTO way, you really want to look for, and you're, and you're relatively healthy, you are gambling not on your healthcare, but you're gambling on your premiums. And you want to try to find plans that have the cheapest premiums and max out your HSA. And if you have certain doctors that, you know, aren't covered, that aren't in network from whatever the cheapest premium is that's offered in your area, it doesn't matter. Just pay cash for them. But I'm telling you how to basically game the system. I mean, not in a bad way. I'm just telling you, I think what is, listen, and like I said, even if you have health insurance through your employer, I can almost guarantee that your employer is going to offer you some sort of high deductible plan. And what you should do is you should look at that, look at how much the premiums are and how much they're withholding versus the plan that you have with a low deductible and ask yourself, does it make sense for me actually to switch over to this high deductible plan and contribute to an HSA and have less money taken out of my paycheck um, from my employer? So, like I said, I hope that that's sort of... Kind of oh, one other thing, too, that's really, really important, actually. I should have said this in the beginning. But one other thing, too. The best way to go and find this type of health insurance, and I, I, I'm going to tell you from experience, okay? Do not buy health insurance on a state exchange or on the federal exchange. Do not do it. What do you mean, Bart? You're talking about buying ACA plans. Yes. Buy them directly from the insurance company. When I was preparing for this, I was looking at Cover California. So we've got a state exchange in California. I was looking at the plans. I wanted to find a bronze plan that was HSA compatible. And I looked at it. And I can look on the Covered California website and it lays it all out. But when it's time when I want to buy the plan, I'm going to contact Oscar directly. I'm not going to buy it through Covered California. Why does it matter, Bart? Well, I'll tell you why it matters. And the first year was an absolute nightmare. If you buy on an exchange, the government is the broker. The state is the broker for selling that product. And any type of customer service that you need, you have to go through Covered California, not the insurance company. So the first year Obamacare was around, I bought whatever it was, HealthNet individual insurance, and I bought it on the exchange. For some reason, I wasn't getting paper bills in the mail, but I was being charged. I had electronic setup, but I wasn't getting these, my premium bills, okay? So I was like, what's going on here? So for customer service, I had to call Covered California, not HealthNet. And you, you know, if you guys remember what the madness back in 2012, they had hired like 10,000 new people, people that weren't experienced in that type of business or whatever. So I called Covered California. Up. Oh, well, the reason why bills haven't been coming to your address is because the, there's no apartment. There was, they had no apartment number for my address. They, didn't have the right, they had no apartment number, so, so they weren't getting delivered. 
So I was like, all right, well, you know, well, my apartment number is 208. Put it on. She's like, okay, I'll put it on. And I could sort of tell she was sort of new, right? So, all right, that's that. After waiting like on hold for an hour to do that, that's that, right? About a week later, I get something in the mail from HealthNet that says, my policy has been canceled. The lady from Covered California, when she was doing an address change on my policy, canceled my policy by mistake. The state worker. So I had to go to HealthNet and say, because the enrollment period was, was, was over, I had to go to HealthNet and be like, look what they did, you know, look what, or I had to talk to a supervisor from Covered California, like, look what they did. They ended up fixing it for me. I have no idea what would happen if that week when I wasn't covered and I didn't know if I had some sort of major injury. But the point that I'm making is, is that go on the state exchanges and look at the policies. And when you're ready to buy one, do it directly through the insurance company. Buy it off exchange don't deal with these state fuckheads ever because I can guarantee you the customer support at the insurance companies are going to be way, way better than the state exchange. So that's another, that's another uh, pro tip for you guys. And it's the exact same thing, exact same plan, compliant, same cost. You can buy it on the state website or you can buy it through the insurance company, buy it through the insurance company without a doubt. So anyways, like I said, that's why uh, I think that that's I think I covered a bunch here, but that's that's why I'm a fan. Like I said, look into getting a high deductible plan, especially if you're healthy, uh, with an HSA.